we'll see if any of that information they might have picked up watching paid off. But Emmy says no. Three beautiful headshots coming out. But it will be a 2v2 left. And CTs are nowhere close to B site. Having to rotate round. Auto director giving us a lovely view, as always. We'll be back with Nar. Bomb goes down. Nuke Dog and Fraser, two lethal players for CX versus No and Mog. No makes the first contact, just can't find the head. And Nuke Dog says no, and that'll be the pistol round for CEX. Yeah, unfortunately, it was just a case where, despite the individual efforts of Emmy, he, he kept swinging bet on both sides of that pallet, making it very difficult for the CEX guys to, to really pinpoint where he was going to peak next. Uh, he gets those three kills, but because they commit three players over to the B bomb site, the trades come out in full force for CEX. They get the bomb down and those players are, uh, the last two players, and it was Nile and Mog, were nowhere near the site. Um, it allowed CX to get good forward positions and land some nice shots, but a nice shot will definitely be had by Ping. Frazier getting one dig straight off the server. As now, we start slowing things down a bit. They're happy that they've gotten that pick and they'll give up middle control as a result. As it does seem like CX will take top banana control in the meantime. as sort of a a sort of a, a consolation prize. In this. Yeah, Ping's rotating around to go for the fast rotate just in case they do eventually push into B. And with the utility being thrown out, he will eventually rotate round, but it is a fake. Terrace instead going towards A. But they might get caught out. There's contact. Ping caught out in the open. Nile gets taken down though. Ping just a little bit damaged through Arch. Be coming around from behind, looking for the flank. Timing looks like last second. Mog will also fall down and four. Jay, this is best. We'll take down Rezu. But it's a two versus three. The CTs are a bit, a bit lost on what they can do here. No utility, no armor for Emmy either. And the T's have a fairly decent hold and crossfire setup. Where the CTs do try and dry push this. Yeah, I think they're now just setting up for exits, trying to keep these players contained. Should that player move over towards Pit, Emmy will take him down. And I thought maybe that they would push a bit more aggressively and try and do enough damage to these players such that should the bomb go off, they would they would go down. But JC Max is playing a little bit too close to fire. He does get himself burned, so he does die at the end of that round despite uh, kind of going for that exit or save call. And... Um, yeah, that round really, really well done by CX. They they start that fake at the exact time that uh, his teammates are going to start pushing up archers. So they take archers control and ping because he's caught between the two sites. It is nowhere to be seen, and and Nile suffers as a result of it. Being the first one to be entered onto that A site had no idea that they could be up the archers. Yeah, and that as you said, it caught Nile out, and Ping could have had a great flank on them, but it just wasn't. The timing wasn't there. Positioning wasn't there, New Dog. This round finds Emmy. Swift headshot with the AK. Only taking a couple of shots. Fraser taking down Jay. Rezu taking down Arthur. Sharing kills. But New Dog wants more for himself. Finds Ping. Where he picks up the last. As expected, playing a very slow aggression for the terrorist side, knowing that they're probably going to be in Ukraine. Don't want to lose any weapons in a stupid uh, mistake of just getting kind of kill hunger. Yeah, and, and just like you said, they've, they've used their weaponry fantastically. They, they made sure to try and get as many uh, kills with those SMGs as possible, but they have upgraded a few of them up to AK-47s. Rezu, the only one sitting with an SMG himself, but Emmy is in the AWP and takes down the AWPer on the side of CEX, but there's still more aggression over towards B. Liam still has impact. Emmy finds a following kill through the edge of that wall. He goes for more as well. He did so much damage, but now leaving Casa in a 1 versus 1, 32 HP. He has two kills to his name, but needs to end the round on 4, or at least delay this defuse should the CTs end up onto the site. But Casa will try and take aggression towards Mog. He's successful in doing so. Nile has a lot of pressure riding on this as Casa has done so well. And it does look like he has an inkling. Timing so important here, but unfortunately the shadow giving Niles position up. Casa converts that one versus 
or one versus two and finishes off the 4k. Very nicely played by Kassar. I was glad to say that Kassar still had some utility left to use, choosing not to use it, just in case the uh, opponent was so close that he could hear the positioning. Very nicely done either way by Kassar. And the CTs are now on the back foot. CZ and Desert Eagles coming across. Emmy, uh, compared to missing quite a few shots in the last map, has stepped up this game, but CX has stepped up an extra gear even further, going absolutely blinding speeds in the driving seat currently. And Ned is currently lost back in the, to be honest, they're not even the passenger seat at this point. They're in the boot of the trunk. Yeah, things definitely not looking comfortable for the for the Nez boys. As um, even so, after that kill that Liam got, he sort of took a pause after he'd uh, lined him up through that wall and and headshot him. He sort of took a pause, like, what have I just done to him? Uh, but it does seem like they will commit over towards the A site. Mog sitting behind the smoke, hoping that one of them will keep through the tiny crack and be successful in getting that first pick onto Casa. But they're playing around these smokes so well. JCMX gets another pick as well. But two versus three now, and Rezu sits uncomfortably on 9 HP, but Frazier will make things a lot more easy going for the CX side as he finds an additional kill. But Emi has the opportunity to take down Frazier, but is unable to land the shots. The CZ does lose its accuracy after the first few bullets, and they were uh, unable to connect in that particular instance. Yeah, left him on very low HP, but he got out. He's got a skin of his teeth. But that'll be CX on five rounds. Max Lux bonus already reached. And we'll see a full buy again for the CTs. Orp in the hands of the enemy, proving that it did work beforehand. It's up to the other players now to some of the players like Ping to step up and show the form that they showed last map. That's what's required of this Ned Scott's if they want to even have a chance to get out of the pack get into controlling this game, but Nudo's having none of it. They're playing his game at the moment. Yeah, some of the players that we might want to highlight are players like Mog and players like Niall over on that A site. Niall, after one of these series, was given a, a swift nickname of the Rock in Pit, and a Rock he might just be, but he has to be a death rock at that. Finds the first kill onto Liam. Will get a successful follow-up kill on the Ping with the supportive play does push through that smoke and take one down as well. But Cass is doing it again. This is definitely the type of situations where you would say Cass has definitely won these before, and Emmy does have a lot to do. Cass can reposition. He has a lot of time to work with, but he's a little bit paranoid. He's clearing a lot of these angles that, if you were if you were Emmy, would be sort of a trump card position. Um, and so therefore he's kind of eliminated some of these uh, or the idea that he would be flanking through middle as, as that's sort of the avenue of attack that would be most likely or the most beneficial for Emi in an instance like this. So he will smoke off Modo and he will try and get this plant down. Playing it a bit safe but knows that because he's put that smoke down Emi could push through but a full commit to the, defu uh, to the plant will now come in. And Emi using the AWP for the retake would like to pick up maybe an AK-47 in this position with Casa being such low health, but it depends if that information has been given across. Emmy slowly creeping. Casa turns away at the last second. Casa, don't do this to me. Emmy finds the shot, being really on point. I was about to say, with uh, players stepping up, as you're saying, Emmy stepping up huge before, with the rest of the team not quite hitting their shots, but this time it was the, the rock and pit. No, just stepping up huge, finding so many players really looking up to his nickname. Yeah, and that's why it was given. <laughs> yeah, and it, he all he needed, he did his job, and he just needed the rest of his team to step up, and Emmy, thankfully, is already in that position and managed to clutch out the rest of that round. We are seeing a pause, I presume a technical pause, because all we've had is technical pauses. Yeah, I, I'd like to think it was a technical pause, but... In the last game as well, when CX first lost around, they did also take a pause. So maybe there's, maybe, maybe there's a player complaining. Maybe, maybe there's a player complaining about something being off, but maybe it's just a bit of placebo running through. <laughs> um, but something they might also want to consider is investing into an AWP on Frasier. Uh, it's not something that we've seen happen uh, much on this T side, and I guess they favor away from it, considering that Inferno, especially, it's it's almost questionable sometimes to even invest into it. 
Uh, but some teams, like you see Navi, try and utilize it using very aggressive angles. Um, but yeah, like you said, I'm I'm a big fan of Nile and a big fan of the Rock and Pit. Yeah, and it's really starting to pay off now that he's got the weaponry and now that Emmy is backing him up as well, denying Casa that second clutch. No one to harm during this technical pause. <laughs> Thank God, we can't lose any more monitors. You know, already uh, GPUs have skyrocketed. We can't have monitors like going up in price because there's a shortage because players keep on punching them. <laughs> no, we don't want that happening. Yeah, I, d I don't think there's a a, a player punching monitors epidemic <laughs> currently going on. Uh, exactly. the Just country. keep lols away from it. You know, don't don't want, don't want to repeat. Yeah, definitely do not want to repeat. But it does look like things will now get underway. Hopefully the CT side doesn't get reset as that is a very big fear for them. They don't have a lot of money going into this, especially only surviving on one player. Uh, if they do lose this, their the loss bonus that they've had or for so long will be completely missing. But this might be going terribly because only one CT player is on B. So many terrorists are rushing towards Emmy. Emmy's got to find the shots here. Gets one. Kassa is down. King of punches, but Nuke Dog deals with Emmy. Mog will take down Fraser, but it's a 3v3. Razor in such low health. And eventually fall to Mog. And the CTs are circling. No off in hand for Liam. Finds Null out in the open, away from his homeland of Pit. New Dog left low down to 12 HP. Liam stepping up huge with two kills this round. Mog will throw down the smoke, but it's not enough. New Dog is too fast on that AWP shot. And the round will go to CEX. Yeah, and unfortunately, we're not seeing enough frag distribution on the net side. Like, Mog came in very big, got those first two kills on that retake, but the other players didn't have much impact. And yes, they did get information as to where those players were, but it puts Mog in a terrible position to, to try and beat them, given that CEX have good enough post-plant positions to deal with them. Um, unfortunate f unfortunately for Mog, I do think Nuke Dog no-scoped him as he jumped on top of that coffins. Um, so a little bit of RNG playing to effect, but he was close enough range that it is very justified that the shot hit. And CEX now sit comfortably on a sixth round as Ned's now on a force buy with the CZs in hand. And there is definitely money in the bank for CEX. Money in the bank, pimping it easy with the amount of cash they've got, but Nuke Dog racking up those dollars, taking down Jay. CZs are playing very close angles with these CZs, trying to find kill. Over Mog, but Emmy taking down Nuke Dog, but maybe too little, too late. Four versus two. AK picked up in Emmy's hand. No, with the close angle, deadly at that range. Resu rescues the situation, and it's one versus three. Emmy choosing to rotate towards the top of mid. Whether Emmy will go for it is a different matter. We'll start pushing around short. A little bit of utility. Smoke and flash. Sees Casa, but doesn't quite connect the shots. Fraser scoping in on the flank. And this may catch Emmy out. Flashes on the return. Oh, the timing! He tries to go for the no scope, won't land it. Emmy deciding to try and peek him, but Fraser is so fast with that orb. We've rarely seen Fraser miss this entire tournament. Yeah, especially in the series, he's had massive impact with that AWP, and it's something that's quite interesting that we, we talked about how maybe it's hard to justify picking up the AWP on T side, but I think they did recover the AWP that Emmy did drop in the previous round, so able to justify it that way, in that they don't make that investment, instead it's the CTs, and the Ned's side, they are in a terrible spot, as they have been reset, they're on to just a standard, uh, standard issue pistol buy, uh, in that they have no investment into this round aside from the flash that Pink has now thrown in towards middle, but none of the CX players are staring at that position. Liam will line up three for himself. Fraser coming in for a supporting kill as well, but Castle will just barely miss that. He's recovered an AK as well, so a bit of impact and a bit of damage going the way of the CX's economy, but it won't ultimately pay too much into things as keeping a good track of where Emmy could be. Nuketown calls his knife out in CT spawn, makes this somewhat doable for Emmy behind the shot, but Rezu 
is able to land that headshot, just trying to, he sort of did it on a fi in a fadeaway. He lined up the shot and just whoosh, tried to escape towards the banana. The theory was right by Neat Dog to try and deny that AK pickup. Um, they've got so much cash at this point that it makes sense to try. They can afford the manpower to just try and remove that weapon from Ned's hands. But it doesn't, it was eventually meant to be, but not for Neat Dog for that matter. Did fall down, Rezu, again saving the day. And he's playing fairly slow this round in comparison to the last couple rounds we've seen. This is one of those things where if you're the CT side and you've been playing standard and passive for so many rounds, it's it's almost expected that you should shake things up a little bit. Um, try and get a bit of aggression towards a particular side of the map. And I guess Ping has shaken things up a little bit and taken that off angle, finds Liam. And so that is a nice early advantage for the CT side going into things. but. Overall, what we've seen from the Neds is kind of more of the same. They're playing slow and passive, playing to the sights, and if that's what they're comfortable with, that's fine. But if it doesn't work, you have to call into fight the right call. Emmy gets caught switching from his nade to an M4. Has new guard right now, try an entry onto J as well. And so that's the B-bomb site. And they're not able to cheat that rotation early enough because of that lack of information or a lack of playmaking. Yeah, Neds are left a little bit in the dark. Mog trying to rescue the situation. He's got to try and find more players. Nuke Dog holding an off angle. With his very low HP. Picks up the AK, walking into the fire. Walk through the flames and bring his team back from the brink. We'll take another tick of damage. Another fire coming out. He's just tanking that. Will eventually fall. It's not enough. And this Neds team is just falling apart at the seams. Yeah, Nuke Dog ends that round with a 4k, getting those entries into the site and getting those last two kills as well. CEX are looking so strong in this, and it's so difficult to see a world where Neds come back into this as they're again onto a weird pistol buy. And we've seen some of these uh, teams win it, and I think CEX is a team we've highlighted for being good on these types of pistol rounds. But they would need to win that and then win the subsequent rounds to follow to really make things at least uh, interesting on the C side. And that's not what you want to happen. This is uh, the dream falling apart with those entry frags first by Fraser and then the rest of the team following up with Liam and Casa. Just a P250 and P2K. And I don't think it's going to be enough. Yeah, they'll be able to get this bomb plant and because they've got so much money but they know that they're on a, a low buy, they're not going to hunt for this at all. They they don't care that they save a P250. They don't care that they save a P2K. Um, and yeah, the performances aren't looking too great from some of these players that I did highlight as being the core of the Nez lineup. You see, like Jay is not having a good game. Uh, it, it's it's been unfortunate the way that the ways that we've seen him die thus far, and that maybe goes to show the sort of level of consistency from CEX instead. But they just, uh, Nets did just come up uh, a three game series where JCMX came up massive in a lot of these games. So, potentially, this is fatigue or maybe a lack of uh, ability to carry all of that forward into this next series. Because yeah, Jay was a huge factor in the win versus Radix. Uh, <laughs> famously, I should say, picking up that 1 versus 5 ninja defuse. But it just doesn't seem like he's having that performance anywhere close to that level this game. Then again, he's also not on that AWP. He was AWPing, primary AWP for that game. We are seeing a pause come through. We'll assume that it's another technical pause, as was said before. Unfortunately, we don't get to see which ones are technical or tactical, because yeah. usually there's a, there's a timer or countdown, right? But, um, but yeah, it, it's, it's something that... I, I put it down to individual performances, but it's it's kind of there's enough there's enough of them not performing that it's it's kind of a whole team problem, right? Um, yes, Emmy and um, like yes, Emmy's had good impact in a lot of, in quite a few of these rounds, but consistently across the board, the next highest player is sitting on five frags, um, and that's good if you're able to distribute the frags, but that shouldn't be that much of a distance between your top performer. Um, especially when you're, you're losing the rounds in the way that you are. Some of these rounds have been close though. It, it's been one versus twos, one versus ones, two versus twos, that all have gone the way of CEX. 
Yeah. Um, Neds is currently doing their best simple and friends impression with one player fragging and the rest kind of sandbagging. But we'll be back into the game. Pause has finished. Yeah. See X with the dual Berettas <laughs> across the board. That little bit of BM feels spicy, man. I love it. Yeah, these Hopefully, guys. Dual Beretta. I'm, I'm fingers crossed. There we go. They're out in force. <laughs> we'll find Mog. CTs are left. With their trousers around their ankles, trying to rotate, but the bomb will go down. Jewel Brettas do work. Gotta love the Jewelies. Yeah, as I said, these guys are quite friendly with one another, so they're trying to throw in a little bit of a bit of BM, but JCMX will BM them right back, getting those two old picks, and we're hearing the chat go off a little bit. I imagine there's a little bit of flame into this round, but Neds are able to pull this back into contention. Four versus two now, now onto a three versus two. JCMX tries to make it through the smoke. Liam and Rezu will shut things down. So although they sort of, I'd like to say that CEX kind of threw a little bit. Um, they were still hunting with, with the duelies and they were still hunting all the way into spawn. Um, they they sort of seri uh, bring themselves back and remember that this is actually another game that they need to win and close it out. So 11 rounds now for CEX and this is not looking good. The, the, I'd imagine the tilt would be setting in pretty hard after losing versus the, the dualies rush banana strategy as we now see Frasia sitting on a Negev. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of when, uh, was it Wong for Alcoholics Anonymous or was it London Esports? London Esports. London Esports where he was just cycling through random weapons. He picked up the AUG one round. PP buys and getting a triple with it. And of course, the Negev. But it will be dropped for Fraser, then picks up an orb. Goes fishing, finds one, lands second onto Jay. And although they are trying to shake things up a little bit, like in the round just previous where they did rush Banana with the duelies, uh, the whole Ned squad, four of them pushed all the way through middle. Um, and that's a really aggressive play that I would have liked to have seen them done three or four rounds. Now CX will collapse onto this A site and should be able to get the bomb down rather comfortably. Um, they're now trying to take these risks, but they don't have the utility to back up the risks. They don't have somebody flashing so that somebody, uh, when they do peek or do they do push, uh, if they do encounter somebody, it'll be a very favorable fight for them. Yeah, I think Nile, the rock of pit falling just then, is kind of uh, a metaphor of what's currently happening on the head side. They're trying to float like a rock in water, it's sinking straight down to the bottom. But a little bit of hope in this round. Mog stepping up big, but might be too little, too late. Fraser, most of the no scope, just playing with time, toying with his food. And he'll have to back off. Fraser winning that round for CEX will eventually die. But yeah, they're sinking. They're, in f they're not just sinking, they're in free fall at the moment, and nothing can stop them from falling at this point, it yeah. seems. Yeah, I say some of these things aren't going the way of the Ned side, but CEX are playing these situations very well as well. Uh, Fraser kind of recognized that he, he was in a decent post plant position to deal with it, and although uh, it's very tilt inducing almost. Uh, from Morgus, he, he makes it very, very interesting. He gets three kills. As the orps now for the CT side, the three Triple of them. Orp set up. I was saying they were doing their best Navi impression with just one player playing well and the rest was playing pretty terribly, but <laughs> they decided to go for the fanatic threat of just buying tons of orps. And it is working. But CX calms down and goes, right, we see what you're doing. We'll stop like pushing right close into smokes. We know you're going to be pre-firing those angles. And we'll slow it down a bit. Not a lot of utility left. Three versus two. Jimmy finds Liam. And finally, Neds will find a round. It only took three orbs. And despite them winning that round, they only survived with two people alive. So even going into this, I mean, they should be able to full buy or at least buy most of the weapons that they need. But we see JCMX seems to be content on having an Agev for himself. Potentially getting the idea from Frasier on the other team. Well, uh, I was going to say something like the Negev is slightly like the Orp. It's nothing like the Orp. It is a pretty terrible weapon. Uh, <laughs> and its situations and its situations is don't use it. Um, 
far as I'm concerned, unless you want to BM, but Neds isn't really in a position to BM, and Jay will fall. This is CX, CEX's game to lose, which will also mean it's a series to lose, but Ping finds Kassa as things get a little more serious. I mean, clearing down, finds Nuke Dog, and that's more like it. They've had a lot of these rounds where they get these openings, but then they just crumble, they just fall apart. Yeah, this crucially, they never get the bomb on those picks as well. So CX playing positionally very well, but things start to fall apart. Niles just pushed through a smoke, and Liam's going down. As a result, all of these A-side players will fall like dominoes, and Mog will be left all alone in a one versus three. Since Frazier posted on the angles, the smoke fades, and CEX take a commanding lead going into their CT half. And this pistol round, it's Although, like, uh, I feel like uh, that scene in the Titanic where the the string quartet, rather than going to life, th they know they're sort of gone at that point, so they decide to go and play. I kind of feel Ned's is kind of in that boat where they're like, yeah, let's just kind of have fun with this, because, yeah, they're in free fall. The, the jewelry's coming out, you know. It's a desperation fire. They've got so much to even pull themselves back into this game. The dream is such a little light at the end of the tunnel and I don't think they can cover that distance and get that. But saying that, the Dinks does come out. So many low health CTs. Beretta's doing a bit of work but it's still 3v3. Every time they get an opening, CX replies. <laughs> As I was saying, a nuke dog just steps up. Massive! Gets three! Going absolutely massive. Absolutely destroying Neds. You can't even have fun. They won't even let them troll. Yeah, no, I mean, they started out kind of, uh, I like to think that they were joking or having fun with the buy that they did going into the pistol, but uh, as they got those picks, they were like, oh, we can win this. And after Casa steps up, gets those first two frags, JCMX takes him down with one of those duelies. But as we said, Nuke Dog just comes in, start kind of swinging his, swinging his pistol around and just kills everybody. Um, but now, two rounds away from CEX's sort of move up, moving up into the upper bracket finals. But Niall will do a lot of damage in the middle in the meantime and does get taken down by the XM of Fraser, the best shotgun in the game. Or so I have on good authority is Nuke Dog, the only one on the A side, but he's the only one necessary. Gets both of those kills up short. Emmy and Ping not even going to be able to check it and. I imagine Mog is soon to follow. He does have the XM in hand. And I'm not gonna try and big that up like it's an incredible <laughs> an incredible weapon to have in this particular instance. But he's definitely gonna keep trying for it. <laughs> but won't find Nuke Dog in the end. And Nuke Dog went massive, but Yeah, it's it's one it's one might even say he's a massive legend after those plays that he's pushed through. But it's just Neds, even with the XM, just no way that they can come back. It's too late. We're seeing the team kills of the Nova come out. Like, this is it. They're, they're at the top. The Titanic is sinking. Their w it's not even a Titanic. The Titanic is floating in the first place. This is just a giant rock drop to the ocean. And it's falling to the depth as the players sink, playing their violins as they're sinking into the water. It's up to their next now, and Emmy will be the last alive. Somehow surviving this long. And that will be the game, that will be the series, and CX will be your other finalists.